Yo, what's going on guys? Chris Barner here, Power Training TV, all things power related. Today I have a special guest, my buddy Mike Westerdahl from uh, Critical Bench. What's up guys? And um, I don't know if you've guys seen any of his videos. I'll, I'll go ahead and annotate something here in the corner. This guy's a monster on the bench press. What's your, what's your highest lift? Um, with equipment, I've done 630, just raw in the gym, my best is 450, and then for reps, my best is 315 for 15, and 405 for 5. Those are the best I've ever done. But if you go back to when I was like 16 years old, best I could do is like 95 pounds. So, so clearly this guy knows what he's talking about. I have him here today, and I want us to go ahead and run through an entire bench scenario to help you guys out, whether it be increasing your bench press or increasing your reps. Let's go ahead and get started, Mike. Well, first things first, everybody's gonna ask, all right, what's the best exercises for bench? What should I do for my assistance work? What muscles do I need to train? Before we get into any of that, the number one thing that you gotta focus on is your technique. We gotta get your technique down and we gotta get that efficient. And once we do, then we can start worrying about the actual workout sets and reps. So, coming to form, you wanna show us a rep, yeah, how you yeah, do it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Check it out. <clears throat> So like you were telling me, I want to basically crunch my back together every time I put my back on this bench. Well, we're getting into the bench press. The thing you want to do is shorten the distance that the bar has to go. Now, if you're just sloppy, lying flat on the back, on the bench, and you just lift it up and totally have your shoulder blades lifted up and come all the way down, it's a long way to go. Why don't you show that? Just lying flat like the way you are, and then we'll compare right it. Yep. This. Yep. All the way down, and then you come all the way up. Instead, what I want him to do now is squeeze his shoulder blades together. This is part of the setup on the bench press. So as he's getting in there, he's going to squeeze the shoulder blades back like this. Now watch my arms. As my shoulder blades are back, I keep the shoulders packed. Look at it from the side here, and I come down, and I come back up. That's a lot shorter distance than just lying flat and coming all the way down, all the way up. So All right, so let me give that a try. Here. Next thing you can do to shorten the distance of the bar is your grip. Now a lot of you guys might grab it in different spots, you're not sure where to grab it. You want to go as wide as you can competition level, so let me check this bar out. Widest you can go in competition is your pointer finger on this ring right here. So picture the wider you're holding the bar, again that shortens the distance. If you're holding it right here, that's a lot farther. So bring your grip outside, that's going to help you too. One more thing we can do to shorten the distance is get a nice arch in your lower back. Now your points of contact, you want your feet touching the ground, you want your butt touching the ground, and you want your shoulder blades tucked and touching the bench and your head down, right? But right here, you want to be able to get your arm underneath here. That's going to shorten the distance where he's actually touching the chest. So if you put those three things together, you'll be able to shorten the distance that the bar has to travel. It's going to help you a lot. Now if you've got real tight hip flexors and you can't get an arch, it's something you've got to practice over time. One thing you can do for your lighter sets is put a nice foam roller underneath your back and you can do your sets with the foam roller under your back. But don't start doing that with heavy weight. That's just to get some flexibility. Do it with like your warm-up sets to work on that, uh, work on that arch. I have a, this is a personal thing that I have in mind, overdoing the, the high reps in the 225, I have a tendency to start using my legs a little too much and using, get my hips off that bench. Uh, a lot of people go back and forth and say, oh, you're supposed to do it for this, you're supposed to do it for that. For football, a lot of the coaches don't care, so I got in that, that habit of just throwing the hips up. Right. What would you recommend for somebody like me? Well, what you could do, you do want to keep your butt on the bench, so what you could do is take some kind of belt or something, so you have a weight hanging on the belt underneath your butt, so that if that falls off when you lift, then you're done. So try to keep that in place. Another gotcha. thing you can do is widen your legs out, okay. and that'll make it harder. So go ahead and get down in the bench position again. You're going to get more of a stable base to press from the wider you spread your legs. So you get a lot more momentum. It's going to be harder to push up. So like, say here? Yep. Because this even feels uncomfortable right now for my legs. Yeah, it's uncomfortable. It'll make it harder for you to like bring your push up. So I'm here. Yep. Stay tight. Ow. Stay tight the whole way down. 
Remember guys, bench is not just a chest exercise. You should be fully contracted everywhere in your body. You're using your legs. As you push the weight up, you should feel your legs contracting. The whole way down, you've got your lats guiding it down, squeezing your back as you're pushing up. It's shoulders, you got chest and triceps finishing it off. So doing this lift correctly can be a full body exercise. And that's the way you gotta treat it. So that's, that's some tips right there. A couple other things. I noticed you've actually got good form on your elbows, but it's very, very common for guys, especially in bodybuilding and you're trying to just get a pump in the chest and not necessarily get stronger for sports and things, is guys flare their elbows out to the sides like this. And you know, when you're young, you can get away with this. Your joints are healthy and stuff. But over time, it's gonna start putting wear and tear on your shoulders. So the way you had it, Chris tucked his, shoulder, his uh, elbows in. He unracked the bar and then he tilted them in. And now as he's coming down, he keeps them nice and close to his side. Now you got that arch, it winds up touching kind of right below your nipples. And if you watch the forearms, they're vertical. Now let's show those two. We'll show it the bodybuilding style, which we kind of want to avoid unless you're going lighter weight and just trying to get a pump at the end of your workout. So you're saying, okay, so bodybuilding body style, what he's style. saying is my elbows are coming straight down, yep, guys even all above the nipples, and that even hurts. It's yeah, so yeah. much stress on the anterior delta, the pec. I don't even feel my, my, my triceps activated until I'm up here. I'm really stretching here. So what you're saying is, I'm same bringing it here. Same exact spot. Now twist the elbows in. And I'm twisting the elbows yep. in. Keep them nice and tight to the side, but you got to touch lower. Perfect. Then you explode up. Yeah, I feel the activation in my triceps a lot different. So real quick, for guys wanting to increase their bench press, their overall one rep max, what kind of numbers would you give them or what kind of programming would you do with them? How many times a week? What, what numbers should they stay under parameters? I mean, I understand, obviously a lot of these guys are like, oh, go lower reps. I mean, from your, what did your program look like when you were going for all out numbers? If I went back to when I was in high school and I first started lifting and I was at the YMCA and training at the high school weight room, I was always doing sets of eight and up to 12. And it was good just to get some practice and get some technique down. But after a year or two of that, it just got stuck. I could not get past around 275 my senior year of high school. Then I went uh, to college, walked on the football team, and I had to get stronger quick to be able to uh, compete with these guys. One of the captains of the football team, uh, he was a middle linebacker. He saw me in the weight room, saw I had potential because I was repping out with, with some okay weight, but he's like, Mike, you gotta go lower on your reps. He's like, start doing like triples. Now I had a foundation because I had been lifting for a couple years, so I was ready to go down to sets of three. So doing like five sets of three. But if you've never done that before, start with fives because you don't want to just jump down too low too quick. Your body's not going to be ready for it. This kind of training is not just about growing your muscle or muscle armor. This is training strength. You're training your nervous system, your bones, your ligaments, and you got to get all that prepared. So if you drop your reps down to fives and do that for six months, you're going to get a lot stronger. Once you got some of that foundation under you, you can definitely start dropping down and doing sets of threes, sets of twos. What you don't want to do is max out. I remember in high school, we used to do this all the time. It was like the guys just going to the weight room, maxing out like every single week, seeing who could do what. I'm telling you what, you keep doing that, you're going to get actually get weaker, not stronger from doing that. You're just frying your nervous system. You need to recover. The weight room is when you're tearing things down and when, you, when you're off, that's when you're actually growing and repairing and getting stronger. Uh, one more quick tip that I think will really help you guys is your breathing. This is totally different from when you're maxing out than what, what a lot of guys are used to. What a lot of guys do normally when they lift is they take a big breath, they get the hand off, they come down, and now they exhale or breathe out as they're pushing up. So push out and breathe out as you're pushing up. See, so breathe in and then exhale as you push out. You know what? That's fine for body out and conditioning but that's not good for when you're maxing out or you want to see how much you can lift for one rep because you have a leak in your body when you're letting that air out if you're just doing one rep you want to stay tight the way you can stay tight is to keep that air in the whole time all right so Chris will take a big breath in I hand it off for him now he holds the breath for the whole rep still holding it in still holding it in presses up still holding it now he can let it out Doing, remember how we said you're going to be doing sets of fives or sets of threes? Use this same kind of breathing, but after each rep at the top, you can take a new breath. So you hold your breath. And at the top of each rep, you can take a new air. 
Now it's going to take practice. Eventually, as you get better at this, you can start doing two reps and three reps with one single breath. And you're going to feel a lot stronger that way. Well, there you have it. I gave you guys like five tips. Don't say I didn't help you out on this. Thanks, Mike. I appreciate it. It's been a pleasure, my man. Check it out. Try it out. Chris Barner, Power Training TV.